Hello, everyone. Thursday is back. You know what that means. It's the weekly wheel and see what random ad that uh, Google Chrome puts up for us. Now, last week, we had some, uh, uh, some questionable confectionery, but we survived. And on to the next. And who knows? December started off, you know, not tasting well. Maybe December will continue. Maybe eventually will lead to a Christmas miracle. But let's spin and find out. I don't know. You would like to think. But we're about to find out. Because coming up this week on Jank Pack Thursday, where's it gonna stop? All right, some Coca-Cola Series 2 from For the Pools. Back-to-back -back weeks he's given us cards. This time, there is no gum. This time. Stay tuned for whatever's coming out of this pack. And we are over at the table. Weirdly, the sun is shining. First time I've seen the sun in a little bit. It's actually rather nice. It's, even made, it's made even nicer by the fact that, give me a mitten full of cards, that there is no, there is no gum in the pack of uh, Coca-Cola Series 2, the one that's sent to us by For the Poles. And I know I have a couple of different FTP, nope, Superman, a couple of different, well, here's a Coca-Cola, that's Series 3. Ah, Coca-Cola Series 2 from For the Pulls. Hey, you know, it is a Christmas miracle. Drink Coca-Cola, says Santa Claus. What? Are, what is in you? There's a little... Eight premium cards plus one Coke cap. Oh, thank God. I felt something in there. I was like, oh my God, is there actually some sort of horrifying Christmas gum? Randomly inserted a uh, coupon can be redeemed for a metalized gold card containing one gram of 999.9 pure 24 karat gold, a thousand only. Odds one in 3,600 packs. Watch it, watch it come out of here. That would be hilarious. What year are you? Are you telling me anything? Uh... No. But, that said, collector's cards, search for the gold. You know what? Santa tells us to search for the gold. So we're going to search for the gold. I would crack, crack up. Crack up, if that actually happened. Well, let's take a look at the Coke cap. I'm not sure what this is going to be. Well, this is kind of cool. Well, I like that. Let's see. Series 2 Coke Cap. 3 of 8. Marketed by Collector Card. Well, that's kind of cool looking. Way too small. Ah, you go there. But let's take a look and see just what in the world. Okay, so it's like um, Rockwell-esque painting. That clown. That clown. 1950. Wow. The image on this card features original art that was created for the Coca-Cola company in 1950. In this scene, the, cl the clown is handing the two young ladies a bottle of ice cold, quote, Coca-Cola, end quote, what? To enjoy while they're taking a break. Is that what we're going to go with? Okay, we'll go with that. In uh, 1950, the Coca-Cola Company began bottling operations in Cyprus, the Republic of Congo, India, Iraq, Lebanon, and Saudi Arabia. Well, it's on it's on there, but ooh, there's trivia there. Hmm. 1994. Well, I ruined it. But as of 1994, Stan the Man was the record holder in that. That that that's a slightly odd note, but I do like. Uh, let's see. Prenez un Coke equals soyons ami. The symbol. What language is that? 1944. Uh, the Sprite Boy is featured in the French-Canadian, okay, that's why I couldn't read it, advertisement for the Coca-Cola company that appeared in 1944. 
By the way, it's eucalyptus. The Sprite Boy was created by, for the Coca-Cola company by illustrator Haddon H. Sunblom. Coke fun fact. During World War II, the Coca-Cola company sh shipped excuse me, 64 bottling plants overseas to serve American military personnel. Well, that's cool. I did not know that. These are awesome. By the way, apologies for my poor French, but we've come to expect that. Back to 1950. We got bowling, we got, all right, so we got the sports, sailing, what do we got? Uh, oh. This card features original artwork that was created by Francis Chase for the, um, um, Coca-Cola Company is just too long, for Coke in 1950. This painting reminds consumers that Coke can add enjoyment to a number of exciting activities. In 1932, Coke began bottling operations in Java. I like these random Coke facts, actually, because I don't know too much about it. Here we go. Uh, Fanta, Fanta, weil, I'm not even going to try. Macht und, und schmeckt. Okay, so clearly we got some German going on. 1982. Yup. This card depicts uh, an advertisement for the Coca-Cola... For, for Coke that appeared in Switzerland in 1982 featuring the Fanta brand... Fruit-flavored soft drinks. Love me some Fanta. In this advertisement, the young lady offers a cuddly friend a treat to test the delicious drink. So, yes, I was right, because in Switzerland, they speak the German. In 1943, the Coke Company began bottling operations in Aruba and St. Lucia. Is it St. Lucia or Lucia? I'm not actually sure. Why is it most of the facts are about Coca-Cola bottling? Eh, either way, it's something I didn't know. Here we go, 1944. We all know what time period that was. An overseas military post is the scene depicted in this original artwork created by George Schreiber for Coke in 1944. I got it right that time. Stationed in a faraway land, a bottle of Coke provided refreshment as well as one of the comforts of home to American soldiers. In 1986, the Coca-Cola Centennial Celebration was held in Atlanta for the worldwide Coke family. Shout out Atlanta, and shout out Coke. Okay, now let's see if we can guess this language. Setter, Mary, well, it's got the O with the cross, so that tells me literally nothing. Could be Cyrillic, could be Scandinavian. We're going to find out. 1977, it's upside down. This card shows the advertisement for Coke that appeared in Norway, okay, so Scandinavian, during 1977 and 1978. Around the world, Coke is the choice for refreshment when fun and good times are being enjoyed. In 1941, Coke began bottling operations in Bolivia and Chile. Ooh, blueberries. I actually did not know that. I thought they were red. Penultimate card. Here we go. Old school gas station. October 1954, overseas. Uh, in 1954. God, I can never get that right. This card depicts the cover of Coke Overseas in October of 1954. The cover scene features Piccadilly Circus. Okay, I actually, I actually, honestly did not know what Piccadilly Circus looked like. Uh, located in London, England. The giant Coke sign is a prominent fixture. I wonder if it's still there. A Coke vendor placed in the lobby of the Hotel uh, Waba. Uh, Medzduranyaya, I, I don't know, that's, that's difficult, in Moscow in 1988, was the first commercially operated vendor in the Soviet Union. And yes, we all, well, I, we, I think we all knew that it didn't last a hundred years. I wonder why they would call it a hundred, a hundred years war. It's just like, ah, I don't know. That is such a long... I can't even remember what that was about. 1956, beach scene, upside down. This young couple enjoys a relaxing day at the beach in this original painting, which was created for Coke in 1956. Of course, no beach trip would be complete without plenty of ice-cold Coke for refreshment. All right. And there we go. In 1928, the Coke company began initial bottling operations in Antigua, in Antigua, China, Guatemala, Holland, which isn't actually a country, Spain, Venezuela, and the Dominican Republic. This was interesting, and now I just realized I completely forgot um, my note card. So, one second. 
All right, I will prep for the uh, the plug hunt since there was no gum, but <clears throat> pardon me. This week, not so much a shout-out for a milestone, but uh, I was in a live stream that uh, John Burgess was doing the other day, and Bert was in there, Bert's Beats, MDBC, part of, I guess, uh, one of the founding members and driving forces behind the Modern Day Breakfast Club. He's trying to put out the words, so I said, hey, Thursday's coming up, I'll give it a shout-out, because it's just another wonderful thing that this community is doing is helping to bring all the channels together, build up all, build up the new channels, build up the smaller channels, and let's get everybody just enjoying everybody else's content, which is the, the best part of all of this. Fantasy football-wise and actual football-wise, um, because Jamar Chase apparently ceased to exist last week, uh, I lost. Shocker, I know. This week, we're wrapping up there, getting near the end of the season. I'm going up against Chicago Schultz, and I'm going to get, um, what is the word? Oh, yeah, whomped. Plain and simple, whomped. But it is what it is. Maybe Jamar Chase will do something, maybe not. And for the record, to the, to the media and the Steelers fans, I'm tired of the immediate, we have to bench Mitch Trubisky, because let us not forget... In one and a half games, Mitch Trubisky has directly produced three touchdowns. All right, two passing and one rushing. That is the same amount of touchdowns that Kenny Pickoff has produced in the previous nine games. Kenny Pickett had four games in a row where he did not produce a touchdown. They lost back to back to two and ten teams. That is all I need to say about that probably for the rest of the season. However, we're going plug hunting. We got one, two, three, four, five, six left in the base set and like five packs left. So it's going to be a, a race to the finish. Hello. Red Giant's Cave. Nope. I've seen this guy and I love the artwork. I still haven't figured out the extra eyes unless it's supposed to be two of them. The War Dog. Frankenstein's Monster, a.k.a. the Gentle Giant. Seen this guy before, but I cannot. The mummy? Yes, the mummy. Oh, uh, here come the jank. Back to back, almost. Frankenstein's monster. We got a dragon. The thief. We don't need the thief. Is that Emerald Cave? Oh, Sinbad. I almost said Aladdin. Cato. Unwelcome. Come on. Is that the uh, night tide? And, you know what? At least our friend Gherkin has come back for a visit, so I will claim a moral victory with Gherkin there. And that's going to wrap up this whatever it was for Jank Pack Thursday once again. Thank you, everybody. This was really interesting. Um, I wasn't 100% sure what to expect, but I like the fact that it's like Coke artwork from around the world, and now we know so much about the history of, of Coca-Cola and their bottling thing. But thank you to For the Pulls once again for the pack. Actually, and I do got to say, for me, the hit of it was this Coke cap. This is really, really cool. I really like that. Oops, and it fell over, just to prove my point. But that's going to do it for this week. Thank you for the pulls. Shout out again to Burt's Beats, MDBC, and the Modern Day Breakfast Club. Uh, I'm going to you know, preemptively congratulate my... Um, Supreme Overlord Chicago Schultz in this upcoming Fantasy Football League, or week I should say. Thanks for stopping in. We'll see you next time, everyone.